My name is Craig Nash, and we'd like to welcome you to another It's a Grand Life. And we'd like to say a special hello to our new listeners in Texas, Nevada, Colorado, Florida, and even Alabama. I've been hearing of folks uh, all around the country that are tuning into It's a Grand Life. You know, there's approximately, I've got to get the exact number, but I, I believe the number is somewhere around 3 million grandparents across the country that are raising their grands. So there's a, a little army of us out there, and um, we all need to be informed about what are the best solutions for our grandkids as we're raising them. And that's our, it's our objective here at It's a Grand Life to present subject matter experts that really understand their field of expertise and share that information with you and at a great location to focus specifically on grandparents raising grands, on the grand family. So um, you never know when you're going to need an expert physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech language pathologist with an expertise in kids. And our guest today is the expert here in Michigan on um, have, providing those therapies for little kiddos. And her name is Chris Krajewski, and she's with a group called Metro EHS. Chris, we're just delighted to have you here on It's a Grand Life. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, good morning, everybody. And thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to share um, our experience and expertise and um, maybe help some some grandparents with grand families out there um, find a path forward if they find themselves struggling in some of these areas. Well, there's nothing like knowing an expert. And I, I think you're really gonna be such a blessing to our audience and, and whether they're in Michigan or not, but um, you are a speech language professional. And why don't you give us a little bit about your background, how you got into this space and and what you really like about the mission and vision of Metro EHS. All right, thank you. Well, so yes, I am a speech and language pathologist. I have been practicing as a speech language pathologist for a long time, since, um, for a long time. Um, and I have worked in a variety of settings, including intervention with adults and in pediatrics, in school settings um, and private practice as well. So I have had, um, kind of run the gamut of experience in speech and language pathology, working with individuals who have um, challenges with communication um, and in feeding and swallowing, which is an area that many people don't realize that speech and language pathologists have expertise in. Um, that is um, one of our primary areas of focus as well. So I started working with Metro EHS Pediatric Therapy as a school therapist, um, kind of way back in the, in the 90s. Um, and have since really taken to the pediatric population. Um, I don't think I realized how much I love pediatrics until after I had my own children. Um, I have three kiddos and my, my middleest child actually has Down syndrome. So she has um, disabilities that are, are cognitive in nature and also with communication and some physical um, disabilities as well. So. You know, it was a bit of a shock. It was not something we expected. Um, and I was really lost as to where to begin with her. Um, and Craig, I think I was telling you last week, if somebody hadn't been there to put a pamphlet in my hand and kind of push me in a direction, I'd probably be still standing there like a deer in the headlights, wondering where to begin. So it's okay to feel that way at the beginning when you're, when you're bombarded with a lot of information. Um, and um, because there is a lot of information out there, it's okay to, to take it one step at a time and find a path forward that works best for your grand family. Um, so it, in my case, I just became so fascinated with the way my typically developing kiddos developed versus my not typically developing kiddo. Um, and I realized very quickly that they all develop, they all grow, they all learn, but just differently. Um, and it was kind of my job to, to tap into those differences, to figure out how to get learning in there. Um, and really, I think as parents and grandparents, we, we are in really the best position to know our kids um, and to know what makes them tick and what doesn't in their real world where it really matters. Uh, absolutely, and I just wanna point out for our, our, our audience at home, you specialize in this and it was still a curveball. 
uh, for you uh, to uh, to uh, to adjust to this situation, and I, I I know it's everything's worked out great, but it's uh, so if you're listening to this at home or in your car or wherever you are, you know don't be intimidated. There is a pathway. You're not alone. And Chris is going to point the way here. So you you specialize in Metro EHS with with the, of course the main three therapies, PTOT and speech, but you guys do more than that. What what is that all about? Yeah, we really work hard at Metro to um, to collaborate and wrap around our families um, and our clients with as many services as possible that they will benefit from. Um, so we offer, as you said, speech therapy services, physical therapy, occupational therapy, which, by the way, is all about um, fostering independence with self-care, um, working on fine motor skills, which means just using, you know, doing small motor tasks like writing and, and you know, using the upper body to do things um, and feeding and swallowing too. Um, we also have physical therapy services. In addition, we have ABA services and what ABA means is applied behavior analysis. And this is a specific treatment um, for our, our kiddos who have the diagnosis of autism. Um, in addition to all of those, we offer nutrition services. So some of our, our clients have struggles with being able to maintain healthy nutrition because they have um, certain aversions or difficulty being able to take in food and liquid. Um, we also offer some mental health services, both for our clients and families, because this can be a really stressful time um, and it can impact the entire family unit, not just not just that one little kiddo. So we we really want to um, wrap around our families and support them in every way they need um, as their kiddos embark upon this sort of therapy journey. Um, it is a lot of work. Um, but we, we really rely on our family members, our, our grand family members and our, our, you know, our caregivers to be a part of that team. And I want to highlight that specifically. Um, our, our family members and our caregivers, they know their children better than anybody else. Um, so we really want to include them in what they need to see. You know, and, and working on those areas. What do you want to see your little doing in a year's time? Okay, that's our goal, right? And then we work to get there. We want changes to be made that carry over into the world where people live. <laughs> so um, we, we feel that we can do this best by offering um, a multitude of services from a variety of sort of different lenses um, so that we can um, work together and support our kids and get them through treatment. And for our younger children, the goal is to get them ready for school, which is what what life is for kids, right? And, and, and just to try to get them in and out of this intervention phase and into a school setting where they can just be kids, live life. And our, our listeners may be wondering, you know, boy, this is the end of school year time. Is this really a good time to talk about getting folks ready for school? And as you and I talked last week, it absolutely is because it takes a while to orient the children with the, these new treatment protocols uh, mm -hmm. to get them ready for school. W wouldn't you agree? Oh, yes, I would agree for sure. Um, we we never think it's too early to intervene. And they're, they're really, mm, as far as um, from school starting, there isn't a really a bad time to, to right. begin. Um, we want to um, plan ahead so that we can work toward that goal of school readiness and have plenty of time um, for our kiddos to be able to meet those goals and be able to then move forward. So never a bad time. No, it's a, when I was thinking with the, you know, our life as grandparents re revolves around the school calendar mm -hmm. and we're thinking, well, I have some time to wait till September. Not really. If we can get the, the kiddos involved with their therapy regimen now, they will mm -hmm. really be much better equipped to start school in the fall or to, to get in their uh, appropriate uh, uh, age and what have you. So, um, but it, uh, as you and I were talking, it, it, things tend to start with the pediatrician, don't they? I mean, that, that's where it all begins with the physicians. Mm -hmm. How does that work if, uh, as far as you actually getting the referral and, and beginning the treatment regimen for the patient? Yeah, that's a really good question. And again, that's where many of us struggle. Where where do I go first? Um, and I, I think that if you are um, having concerns 
um, about your grandchild's development or how they're doing with meeting milestones, um, communication, and so on. If you see um, some things that you might be concerned about being a struggle, by all means, the first stop is that child's pediatrician. Um, they are um, able to, to listen to your concerns and then refer you to the appropriate specialists for testing. Maybe that's warranted. Um, maybe they um, are able to reassure you that everything seems to be falling in line. Um, either way, having that open discussion with a pediatrician and letting them know your concerns is where you begin. Um, oftentimes they will recommend certain specialty testing to help rule things in or rule things out, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and then they're directing you really to individuals who have an expertise in a very specific area. And I think that, um, you know, they, they have those resources where you might not know your friendly neighborhood speech therapist, right? right. Um, but your pediatrician does. So uh, by all means, at that starting point, um, that's a great place to begin. Um, doctors will usually initiate this process by writing a prescription, much like they would for a medication. Um, a prescription for, for example, um, the physical therapy evaluation. Um, and that is where you begin with that, with that prescription in hand. Um, and a resource, you can contact that resource and, and schedule an evaluation in that particular area. That's absolutely great. And that's always a great place to start with the doctor. And uh, for folks that are out state, now, if, you, if you're in Michigan, uh, Metro EHS has, I think you said you're opening your 14th location yeah. uh, in Southeast Michigan. So there's probably not a spot anywhere if you're near us here in Southeast Michigan where you, there's not a Metro EHS from a coverage standpoint. But if, if you are in Las Vegas, you would need to chat with your pediatrician and try and get a referral to a, a to an outpatient clinic that specializes in pediatric PTOT speech and the applied behavioral analysis and and uh, um, and, and and also integrate the behavioral health into the one setting, which is so important, like you folks have at Metro EHS, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. Um, and I know that. Um, sometimes because um, evaluations and treatments can can be an expense you are able to use um, insurance coverage many individuals have these types of things covered by their insurance policies so i would encourage um, our grand families to look into those insurance policies to see um, if those if those services are covered and where they might be able to to attend for example certain um, practices may or may not accept certain types of insurance. So you might have to do a little bit of investigation to, um, to find a resource that is um, you know, convenient for you, but also accepts that insurance coverage so that you are able to, um, to rely upon that. Well, I, I was encouraged to know that Metro EHS has not only traditional private insurance like Blue Cross and others, but you also take Medicaid, right? And, and we we do accept some of the Medicaids yep. um, that, that go through um, insurances. So yes, we do have that, that option available. Um, and we, you know, we welcome and value those, those relationships as well. Um, with, with our Medicaid clients, um, often we are in close contact. They are assigned a case manager um, through Medicaid. So there are um, individuals through the Medicaid system that can assist our families in, in finding those services and helping them to navigate, um, you know, all of the, the things that are that are needed, um, and get them sort of get them started. So right. it, it is it is a really nice. Um, a nice system where you can have that resource individual who sort of helps to coordinate everything for you. And I know you also integrate not only with the pediatrician, but also with the school district, right? That's where mm -hmm. you started. So, and the that schools, is, yeah, right? That's They're where very... I started. Yeah, that is where I started. And um, it was always really, um, as a school therapist, the, the, the type of intervention that, that you receive in a school may look different than a very intensive one-on-one -on -one, um, type of therapy that, that a, an outpatient clinic like Metro EHS provides. Um, but you can certainly um, refer, or uh, rather you can certainly approach your school district if you have concerns. Again, this is another avenue. Um, the pediatrician is one resource. 
but perhaps your grandchild is in school currently. Um, our public schools provide these services for their for their students. And so this is another resource, another pathway for you to go to sort of initiate, um, voice your concerns and initiate requests for different types of evaluations. So um, that is another avenue for our kiddos maybe who are a little bit older and currently in school. Oftentimes, um, during the learning processes in school, that's where we start to really see our kiddos with with maybe some challenges, really right. show those challenges, right? Because school is a little bit more structured. Um, there's right. a little bit more expectation on those kiddos. So at times we don't, you know, we don't, we may not catch um, some, some of the more subtle issues until kids get to school and start to struggle. And that's when that coordinated approach is so valuable. The pediatrician, mm -hmm. the school, and the clinical team at Metro EHS. And uh, Chris, before I let you go, I want to, did we touch on the feeding and swallowing issues? I think that's something that parents, you may have mentioned that, and, and uh, I just want to make sure we highlight that as well, because parents may not mm -hmm. know you guys do that as well. Yes, we do. We really, we do. Um, there is actually a new diagnosis out there. It's relatively new. It's called pediatric feeding disorder, PFD. Okay. Um, and this was not historically recognized as its its own thing, um, but it truly is its own thing. And it has now an official name and diagnosis. And there are some statistics that tell us that um, pediatric feeding disorder is more common, more prevalent than even autism is. Um, so I found that really fascinating um, for sure. Um, and pediatric feeding disorders really involve um, a, a child who, who is struggles to eat. And then there could be many reasons that this is happening. Um, sometimes, um, particularly in our kids with autism, um, there are differences in in the sensory world. And by that, what I mean is, you know, there's an environment out there and we all sort of take that environment in through our senses. Um, sometimes when, when kiddos have um, sort of different wiring, right? Different ways of thinking and processing things up here, mm -hmm. um, that, that stuff that comes in through the world and is worked on by the brain can be processed and interpreted very differently. Um, so think of things that you might find kind of aversive. For me, fingernails on a blackboard, everybody's favorite right. example, right? Um, imagine taking in the world and maybe something more common in the environment feels like fingernails on a blackboard to you, right? You're gonna go in a different direction. Right. Um, most of us take in the world in a certain way and we're able to sort of hang in there, tolerate it, maybe even screen some things out, focus on what's important. But some of our kids have a lot of difficulty being able to sort of sort all that stuff out. Um, and this can happen with feeding. And in this case, you might find people who really are aversive to certain textures of foods. They just right. really wig them out. Maybe even in the way a food looks can be enough to turn, turn someone off. I won't go there. Um, and in some of these cases, it can really have a negative impact on um, nutritional health, right? And so we want to be able to help our kids develop a tolerance for um, and be willing to, um, in a very safe environment, explore foods. Um, maybe we start by just having it in the room. Maybe we kind of gradually upgrade to maybe looking at it touching it, maybe even smelling it, right? That's a big deal. Um, and eventually being willing to, in a very safe environment and very gradually on their terms, be able to taste and try different foods. Um, so that's one example of, of how we might intervene in that feeding and swallowing area. Another one is some of our kiddos really struggle with the actual movement, mm -hmm. um, strength, range of motion, being able to really safely chew, manipulate food in the mouth and kind of swallow it down, right? And we can work in that realm as well um, to help kids get better at being able to chew and swallow food safely. 
Well, I hope our listeners can pick up the level of expertise that it takes in dealing with this these types of therapies. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're not alone. It's a coordinated yeah. effort with the, your pediatrician, with your school district, and also with your clinician. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, Chris Krajewski, we can't thank you enough for being our guest here on It's a Grand Life. And at the bottom of our, our screen, you'll be able to see how you can contact the folks at Metro EHS. And I, if you have questions, can our listeners call you and and uh, uh, get the or call the the clinic? What would you recommend to get to answers regarding how to get started? I think that would be wonderful. You can absolutely call our our clinic location. We can certainly assist you um, or point you into a direction um, of of someone who can better assist you, depending on the situation. Um, If you have um, a grandchild who has a diagnosis of autism or you're concerned about that, um, another resource to go to um, if you're just kind of wondering where to start in, in Michigan is the Autism Alliance of Michigan. This is an alliance or a group of professionals who have a lot of resources for for parents and for for grandparents and families um, for um, where to start and how to navigate um, in all of the areas of concern, development, financial, transportation, all of the things that can impact um, a family trying to get services for their for their kiddos. So that's another amazing resource for you. Chris, that is absolutely terrific, and I wasn't aware of that. And I'm, mm-hmm. um, I'm sure our listeners, uh, our guests, are, I mean, our, our folks at home aren't aware of that as well. Some of them, and um, that's why it's so important to have uh, folks like Chris, Chris Krajewski here on uh, "It's a Grand Life" to help us navigate the the land that we're not that familiar with, but we need to have this expertise if we're as we raise these grants. So, thanks so much for being our guest here today. I want to encourage you at home. Call the folks at Metro EHS, get the answers that you need. If they don't have the answers, you can tell by t- listening to Chris, they're going to point you in the right direction so that your grandson or granddaughter can get the care that they need so the whole family can live a grand life. Thank you so much for being our guest again, Chris, and have a great rest of the day. Well, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. You have a wonderful day too. Thank you for joining us for another It's a Grand Life. Remember to never waste your pain. God can use your situation to bless others even halfway around the world. Be sure and subscribe to It's a Grand Life on our Facebook page, as well as YouTube and any of the various podcast channels that feature the Grand Life podcast. When it comes to raising a grand family, remember the words of the Apostle Paul who said in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. In leading your grand family, it's going to take faith, hope, and a whole lot of love. Please reach out to me. I can be a blessing to you and pray for you or help you connect to free resources that can make your journey a little easier. 